the presentation very interesting. And while you were, well, we have been talking about uh, our presentations for, for a few days, but uh, when she told me about uh, the presentation, I thought about something that I've been sharing with peers and with uh, other speakers for uh, some time now. And, um, you know, there are many artists and civil society uh, organizations and even some politicians advocating for uh, uh, making tech companies and oil companies uh, account accountable for the impact they make uh, on the environment. And, um, you know, when I think about our sector, the art and tech and digital art sector, uh, I find that not many artists, they are positioning themselves about this issue. And I wonder if you think, um, and I talk about artists and, and, and also institutions hosting these artists, if they should be more pro uh, uh, supporting these ideas and, and, and pushing for the tech companies to not only to pay for the damage they make uh, on the environment, but also pay taxes. Um, and what are your thoughts on this? Okay, um, it's, a, it's kind of a difficult one because yes, I, 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 on the one hand I, I always think it's, maybe it's not the role of the artist and on the other, if they are good citizens they will find it normal to do it. Um, it's also difficult when you are an artist and it's so difficult to get funding, to um, to say no or to stamp your foot down and to say you need to clean up your act and I will not work with this institution just because you are sponsored by the oil company, you, t you take risk. I mean, maybe it's doable in Limassol, but in London it's more difficult or in Paris it's more difficult because if you say no, somebody's going to say yes. I always, I'm always conflicted between Yes, the artists uh, have obligations and, and duties, and on the other, the artists, they should be allowed to do whatever they want and take the dirtiest money ever, as long as they make something that, that fills me with joy, I'll be, I'll be happy. I can, I can have this kind of contradictions. Um, so, does it kind of answer your... your yes, you know, the, what I was thinking also while you were talking is that um, if you think about it, like many artists, they they take uh, every new technology that comes out in uh, the market. I think the maybe scientists and artists are the ones who experiment with the, each new technology and they mature that technology and they make this technology more not only accessible but more widely used uh, by the main public. So they are making the companies richer in a way. So, you know, at some point I thought maybe they should have also a say about uh, all of these questions, you know, I, I understand your, your point, but I, you know, I keep thinking that they should be a bit more... The thing is, I noticed, um, is this, okay, I will not give any artist name. So there are artists who have these magnificent uh, installations. There's a really famous one, and I like him, he's a really lovely person, he's a great artist. But he has these fantastic uh, installations, he's extremely famous. and. And at some point I discovered that, that, that they are actually critical. They are against surveillance, they are, they are really, they, they want to show the negative part of technology, but his, his work are so spectacular that you don't perceive the, the, the critique. And even other works which are more obviously critical, in the end for some people what is, what is just amazing is or the way it looks, or the, is the innovative aspects, or, uh, you know, we do, if you go to Arce Electronica, there will always be people asking, so how does it work? So I, I think there is this, this, um, this fascination of technology that uh, make people really forget that maybe the art works. It's, I think it's a, there are some artists who are well-meaning and they, they really want to criticize. But probably they have to communicate better. They probably they, they have to make more difficult choice. Maybe they have to be less seducing or be very seducing, but uh, surprised with a stronger message. I think, um, yeah, and, and also I, I'm thinking of all the artists who really struggle and uh, the only one who pay them very well. Uh, uh, 
you know, these big tech companies. Oh, you know, um, how is, he has a, Joanie Le Mercier. So Joanie Le Mercier has this, um, I should remember the time, the time film and not say anything. Um, he, he made this beautiful aesthetic installation. He's extremely, extremely successful. Like 3D mapping. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And um, yeah, okay, he knows it. I'm really not interested in his work. Like, what's the point? But um, I love what he does on the side. So because at some point he realized that uh, he was also glorifying technology. So now, for example, he continues doing these works because it's what people ask him again and again. Uh, and that's what he, how he makes a living. But then he dedicates a lot of his time and his talent to working with uh, Extinction Rebellion and trying to uh, also criticize really mo with more direct, direct action. Some of them are very political, some of them are very down to earth. He, he, he criticizes the people who fabricate the technology that he's, that he's using. And, and so that's another strategy that I, I really, I, I really admire the fact that he, he found a way to negotiate between how to make a living and, and how to stay true to his own preoccupations. Yes. In your presentation, I think there was, um, there was this idea of resisting and of, of trying to change society or do something about the ecology and, and being as artists more engaged and, and try to change the world. And I'm wondering, is it, is it enough? Because I was, I don't know if you, if you read the, the book, uh, How to, the one with the pipeline by Andreas Mann how to sabotage a pipeline. I think it was how to sabotage a pipeline. Anyway, the, the guy, uh, Andreas Mann, has this theory that, uh, well, Extension Rebellion is not doing enough, and um, we have to escalate our actions. Between, because we've been raising awareness for a long time, and it's something you, that appeared also in your presentation, and we've been protesting peacefully for a long time, and we've been making protests peacefully and chaining ourselves for a long time. It doesn't work. It's been, doing for, it's been going on for decades. We have to escalate. We have to, as you say, sabotage a, a pipeline, organize. They do that in Turin, but they do that elsewhere. Like, um, they have these... Uh, um, ecological activists during the night, they uh, puncture the tires of big SUV cars because there are so many SUV cars in Turin. It's a car city. That's the city where I live, by the way. And it's also the city of the, the Fiat. And, and one of the sponsors of the Juventus Football Club is, um, is a big maker of SUVs. So they puncture the tires of the, of the big SUV and then they leave a message uh, on the windscreen saying, you know, it's not against you, but um, you should not, not drive an SUV if you have children because they are very polluting, because, uh, because they are very dangerous, and, and, and think about your children. Um, you should not drive these cars if, if, if you want for them a brighter future. So, very long question, but to ask you, do you think, do you think it's enough for artists to... Um, to do lovely works uh, about the environment, about social program, problem, and to exhibit them inside the gallery? Like, do you think they have to escalate and to be more violent? And as we see, throw soups and, and uh, puree at um, uh, paintings in, yeah. in museums. Uh, well, as, as someone, I'm someone who thinks that nothing is black and white. You know, we, keep, we, we must and we have like a range of like different colors and different positions and ideas in between and I apply this to everything. Um, you know, I think, uh, yes, we, we, you know, we must be people, we need people being uh, critical and, you know, I'm gonna put you an example. I have been working and supporting the work of uh, an artist, an activist, Marta, she's a Spanish artist activist. Um, uh, uh, from from Granada, uh, and she's been uh, so last year she walked all the way from uh, Granada to Helsinki, uh, and she took but also she took some ferries and trains, 
to uh, uh, support the uh, non-flying movement and also along the way she was uh, um, giving voice to the Extinction Rebellion uh, ideas and also uh, doing some training in non-violent action. So I, I, support, I supported her and I still support her quite a lot but then she went into a more radical move and, and in actions. Uh, she's been to jail a few times. I think she's going to go now also for six months. And also in her discussion, she was becoming very radical. And um, so I don't know where the line is, but for me, this new uh, ta tactics of uh, throwing painting in a museum, uh, as, as as today, I don't know what to think about it. I'm, I don't know. I, you know, when I see this, I'm thinking about how polarized our society is and what is yet to come because, you know, we need to think about the future and for me it doesn't look that bright. Uh, I wonder how all these actions are impacting the human mind. Are they bringing positive values or are they going to make people freak out and become more tension, you know, create more tension, create more polar polarization. I have no idea. You know, this is something that probably uh, psychologists need to study. But I don't know if I'm, I'm answering your question. But I, yeah. I think we need to have activists. But the very radical uh, lack of activism, uh, and I mean, in throwing stuff in a public museum, I don't. Uh, I'm not so keen on that. At least as today, maybe, maybe in five years we need to take the streets and we need to destroy <laughs> everything. Or, or I don't know. Yeah, and also the tactics in museum, I think it can backfire because now in in Italy it's being criminalized. Actually, I think in the UK they are not in also not in Spain as well. And also, um, yeah, if you see, if I. I had a look in the press and how it's presented, and I'm sure you know the, the painting actually, they are, they are protected anyway, there is a glass in front of it, they choose the ones that they know they will not damage. But then the press have these big headlines that simplify, and it's just activists, eco-activists throwing paint at, at masterpieces. So of course people really love traditional art, and so they get really, really worked up and angry. And you can tell them again and again that, you know, the, the, the painting the, the didn't suffer, it was protected. And uh, the paint they used, it was, it was washable. It's too late, people are already angry, and yeah. But also, I wanted to say something else, that I, I think, together with all of that, I think we need to, for me, to have more practices like uh, have a home with they are raising awareness about an issue, but they are also in a, in a very, not simple because the project took a year and they have been collaborating and building the project with scientists, but they are showing that we can do something about it. We can transform all the ways. You know, when we had this seminar yesterday mm. and uh, at Alan Post was showing all the ways, I was thinking about this project, you know, like you see, Something that is also really important for me are interdisciplinary collaborations to show that something else is possible, that we can, why don't we focus on what we can do and what, what, what we can do different instead of uh, breaking glasses or throwing paint to, yeah. paint into the, to the, to a museum. So for me, it's also that side of the, the conversation or the activism. Okay, then I have another question because um, how do you how do you communicate? So what Hyperconf is doing is fantastic, and it's it, it's like beautiful. The tiles I saw them once; they are objectively really fascinating. The work is interesting; it's useful, which art is not supposed to do to be so useful and 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 healing. But how do you do you communicate that? Because um, as I told you, I'm from a working class background, and in my family, you don't go to museum. Well, maybe you go to the Museum of the Iron or the Museum of Cars, but you don't go to, to art museums. And if I think of the people I went to school with, including people I went to university, when I tell them what I do, oh, you work in art, that must be so boring. Poor regime. And because they, they, 
they just think that art is not for them. There is this idea that art is very elitist, it's for, for certain person that you have to have a certain education, that you cannot understand it. But there's a lot like hyperconf, I could explain it to, uh, to anyone, it's quite easy. So how do we get this kind of art in, you know, in the public and not just uh, in a gallery or in a museum? Yeah, um, I mean, that is, I guess, um, a, so it's a very interesting question. Um, I guess it, it involves the work of the curators, but also uh, gallery directors or people working in institutions to, is their work to amplify the voices of, uh, again, different practices, practices that are uh, more experiential, but also practices that are more um, practical, I would say, or more restorative in, or transformative in their values. And I, I love the idea of taking art outside the gallery space. That is what I call, and many people call it as well, art, art beyond the uh, white cube, mm -hmm. you know, the four or black cube in some uh, occasions. And I, I'm pro that, you know. I, I think we need to take yes to the galleries, but also yes to taking artists not only to perform or to show work outside the uh, traditional spaces, but also to produce work with local people outside the galleries. So mm. I'm pro that, and that is the transformation I'm navigating now. And I became very interested in these practices in Mexico. Uh, especially in 2021 when I collaborated with three choreographers and their practice is all about we do our stuff outside the gallery. We collaborate with the gallery in, in having conversations here, maybe in building part of the material that we are going to use in the public space, but then the rest we um, finish the production with local people, so we went around looking for a carpenter, for an electrician, outside the public space or the gallery. And then the, the actual uh, performance took place in the public space. And I loved it because you had a square full of 300 people without doing very much marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, that is also Mexico, how you know, we live at uh, the new match in the, in the public space. Uh, so from that, I also took the decision that I want to work and promote more of these uh, practices. So, again, I don't know if I have responded to your question. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least you've said very interesting stuff, so <laughs> that's what matters. <laughs>